Boom. Okay, showing you guys an example of my PNF protocol. Um, I usually do some sort of a prep, and this is my favorite way to prep. I do these uh, adductor flies to start, so I just put some weights. You know, I think these are only like six kilo, but um, sometimes I'll do less reps on days that I'm feeling really, really good, and I'll do um, heavier weights, maybe up to like 12 kilo. Um, I'm not really concerned with the weight nearly as much as just getting a good sort of uh, borderline fatigue, maybe even past fatigue stretch in there. Uh, so those adductors really start shaking. Uh, so I'll do, you know, quite a few repetitions. Not really worrying about the reps as much as I'm worried about um, just feeling a lot of blood push in the area. Same thing with these hamstring curls. Just popping a band on there and just 50 reps, you know. So if it's just kind of like scooting forward on each one, squeezing tighter and tighter. Same thing with the hip flexors. All this stuff will help out with your performance in uh, running and other athletic endeavors as well. So you, if you're going to do PNF stretching, that's the number one rule is you have to warm up very thoroughly. Even after your training session, which I do all this stuff after I train, then I also warm up. So here's some examples of the PNF protocol. So if you can't read this whole thing, just pause it or... Um, you know, uh, I've, I've got it on the next one as well. But the whole idea is that you squeeze, you know, we go 50% for five seconds, then you squeeze 75% effort for five seconds, and then you squeeze 100% effort for five seconds. In between each one of those, you rest for 10 seconds, just kind of relaxed. And then the very last thing that you do is you squeeze 50%, 75 then 100% effort all in succession, and then you switch sides. So pretty simple, shouldn't take you much more than a minute to a minute and a half at the very max uh, to get all that done. Uh, some of the caveats is the stronger you are, the quicker and the more effective the PNF is. What does PNF stand for? In case anybody's wondering, it's proprioceptive neuromuscular facilitation. Um, it, it just means contract, relax. So the harder you can squeeze, the deeper you can go, um, but you're also strengthening your range of motion that you're gaining. So there's, I mean, in, in, of everything that I've come across, this is the best way to stretch. Um, you know, there's other things that work great as well. This one requires the most resources. You know, you're using the most amount of energy, but uh, I mean, it's just, it's just the quickest, most efficient way that I've come across. So, um, you know, be that as it may, is there something better? Maybe, I don't know. Maybe it's better just to use loaded stretching with weights and just take your time. Um, but if you're healthy and you're strong, this is a great way to do it. So you can see I'm just all out, squeeze, 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 and then relax. Uh, let's see, okay. So now I'm not able to go anywhere near this deep at the very beginning. So, you know, obviously within 30 seconds, I'm able to double the... <laughs> Double the depth here. So this last one, 50% effort, just barely squeezing. Then I go right into 75. Okay, I'm starting to feel it now. And then just squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Abs, grip, everything as tight as you can. And then switch sides. So that's pretty much it. That's it for, uh, you know, the order doesn't really matter as much. Normally I do um, adductors, then I do hip flexors, and then hamstrings, but you know, it, it doesn't really matter. So uh, if your goal is just side splits, for instance, you might skip the other ones and just do the adductors. If you have really tight hip flexors, but your hamstring's good, you might just do the hip flexor, so on and so forth. It just depends on how much time you have and what you're willing to sacrifice or what you're willing to put in for that time. So uh, yeah, I mean, I love this. It's an extra... 25 to 30 minutes, maybe maybe a little bit more on some days that I'm taking my time um, at the end of a workout or at the end of the night. But to me, it's worth it. And, um, you know, if I, th this is my secondary goal is to regain my splits. So if there's sessions that I, I can't do them, that's fine, or I'll do them on off days. But I'm really aiming for a minimum of three sessions a week. But four is, uh, four is my goal. So, um, be that as it may, but I hope you guys got some good ideas. If you are going to do this stretching type, be very cautious in the beginning, especially if you're not used to all the strain on your ligaments or the strain behind your knee. So um, 
that's uh, with that warning out of the way have fun with this start conservatively and build slowly 